Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the sinoatrial node. Okay, so we are in the process of discussing the function of the sinoatrial node and the role it plays in the cardiac cycle. So we're just having a bit of a revision of the cardiac cycle. So, so far, the action potential from the sinoatrial node has spread down uh, the atrial contractile cardiomyocytes and has caused atrial systole. It's then reached the atrioventricular septum, past which it cannot propagate, and it's then gone through this septum via the atrioventricular node, which is very, very slow to conduct the action potential cross to give time for the atria to eject their blood into the ventricles. Then this action potential is going to conduct down the bundle of His, which will split at some point into two separate branches, which I'm going to show now. So it's going to split into two separate branches, okay? Now one is going to service the right heart, and the other is going to service the left heart. So uh, this here, the one that's going to service the right heart here, this is known as the right bundle branch. Okay, so it's the right branch of the bundle of His, which is why it's called the right bundle branch. Okay, and the one that's going to service the left heart for the heart is known as the left bundle branch, so nice and sensible. Okay, so these again are conducting cardiomyocytes, so they are not contractile, but they will just conduct the action potential from one to the next to the next, and they are involved in taking this action potential to the base of the ventricles before we actually release it on the cardiomyocytes uh, that are contractile. Right, now the next step is you're going to have one final um, set of, con of conductile um, cardiomyocytes, conducting cardiomyocytes, which are known as the Purkinje fibres, which I'll show in pink here. And these are fibres which spread out uh, along the base of the heart, basically. And these are then going to give the action potential. These are going to connect to the contractile cardiomyocytes. And they're going to spread the action potential to those contractile cardiomyocytes, which will then spread it to their neighbours, and it will propagate up the uh, contractile cardiomyocytes of the ventricles. So these fibres in purple here, here, these are known as Purkinje fibres after the scientist Purkinje, who presumably discussed the, uh, uh, discovered them. Purkinje cells, or Purkinje fibres. Oh no, Purkinje cells suggest that we're talking about the cerebellar um, neurons, so no, Purkinje fibres, call them Purkinje fibres. Okay, so Purkinje discovered multiple cell types. He discovered cells that were in the brain as well, in the cerebellum specifically. So Purkinje cells suggest that you're talking about the ones in the brain. Purkinje fibres makes everyone know that you're talking about the ones in the heart. Okay, so these Purkinje fibres are going to uh, propagate the action potential onto the contractile cardiomyocytes of the left and right ventricles. And then what's going to happen is these uh, cardiomyocytes that are contractile are then going to spread it among one another and it will propagate up the walls of the right and left ventricles and cause ejection of the blood, well, cause contraction of these ventricular uh, cardiomyocytes and then uh, ejection of the blood into either the pulmonary trunk or the uh, aorta. So what's going to happen next is you're going to get ventricular systole, and at the same time as you're getting ventricular systole, the atria will be starting to relax, basically. So you're going to get atrial diastole, and at the same time you're going to get ventricular systole. And this is why the atrioventricular um, valves are very important uh, in stopping the blood from going from the ventricles back into the atria, because they're a one-way system. The, the blood will push up against these valves, and they'll, it'll cause them to move in this direction, but then they'll get stuck perpendicular, and they'll be in the closed conformation, and the blood just won't be able to push them back into uh, the atria, or at least it shouldn't be able to. There are pathologies where it can. Okay, so ventricular systole. Okay, and then what's going to happen is after the ventricles have contracted, they're going to relax, and for a moment then, both the atria and the ventricles will be uh, relaxed at the same time, and that's known as diastole, cardiac diastole, which is the phase where the both the atria and the ventricles are currently relaxed. 
Okay, and then what will happen is the sine wave will know will do the same thing again. Basically, it will um, it will start the whole process again. And during the diastole process, what will be happening is the heart will be refilling. So the atria will be refilling with blood from the inferior and well, the right atrium will be refilling with blood from the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. The left atrium will be filling with blood from the pulmonary veins. And then the blood will move from the atrium to the ventricles by a drip process initially, just by um, movement uh, through flow. Okay? Uh, but uh, then what will happen is when the sinoatrial node uh, sets off another action potential, the atria will contract again, and it, the whole process will begin again, and you'll eject blood from the venous side into the arterial side. Okay, so that's the function of the sinoatrial node in basically triggering the whole cardiac cycle. It's what sets off the entire process. So what we now want to look at uh, is the mechanism by which the sinoatrial node actually generates spontaneous action potentials rhythmically. But we'll do that in the next video.